Chief, how's it going? Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry I called you Chief. You know, I know I've been calling you Chief and used to you act like it made you mad. But you loved me enough to let me do that. But did, was you really angry or, 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 or what? Well, you know, um, in the beginning, before we became brothers, it kind of angered me a little bit. Because right. Of the foster care that I was in, you know, in foster homes in and out. Never had a stable home, and it always seemed like the white people. I mean, I don't mean that in no, a bad it's way. Fine. I don't mean that in a bad way, but some of the white men, you know. Right. I did chores, didn't bother me, you know. I feel like I should pull your own weight, you know. Right. And it, it, was, it was always calling me chief. Sometimes, ain't that right, chief? And give me a swift kick in the behind over in the corner, yeah. you know, you know, stuff like that. It's just. Really kind of, just stuff that happened to me a long time ago. Because you, I shouldn't let it bother me. You, now. you say you're in foster homes and stuff. I was in a lot of foster homes. How old were you when you went to foster homes? I was you know? five years old when I left the reservation, the, the Lake Traverse Reservation, in South Dakota. When I was five years old, and my little brother Paulie, he was one. And I guess the Bureau of Indian Affairs made us made it where. Me and him stuck together the rest of our lives. But once we got turned 18 or, or younger, we just went our own ways. I haven't seen my little brother Paul in a long time. Do you have any idea where he's at? Last I heard, he was up in South Dakota with Kayleen. I didn't even know I had an Indian sister until I went to prison. <laughs> That's what you and you've been in prison. Holy cow! <laughs> Holy and cow. I'm calling you chief, <laughs> man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tell me what in the world that was prison for you. <laughs> Ah, prison, prison, prison. Yeah. Did they did they try to teach you about Jesus in prison or anything? Yes, yes, it was. Well, that probably put a seed in there, you know. Yeah. And then you met an idiot like me. And... <laughs> idiot? <laughs> I'm glad I met you. I just wish it would have happened earlier, a long time ago. Well, it's going to be a great Christmas, isn't it? Yes, it is. You know, all through my life, and this foster, my sister, I call my sister now. Yeah. She tried, she tried to get me to go to church with her. And I wouldn't go because, well, it wasn't because I was trying to stay away from Jesus and God. It was just the preachers and people in the churches seemed like they was always looking down. And the preacher wasn't really preaching. I mean, he was preaching, but it seemed like he was more, I don't want to say it. It was just too much all at once for me to handle yeah. to comprehend, you know. And like you, you just talked to me. And I knew when you was talking to me that you were sincere, you know. <laughs> it touched my heart. <laughs> Praise God. And it made me do something I never did before in my life. Yeah, you know what that Shed was? <laughs> humbly, what I'm telling you is Jesus was talking through me to you. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget that experience of when you prayed in the prayer you prayed. Uh, it's going to make for a good Christmas this year for a lot of people. Yes. Thanks for your story, Timothy Dillo, but I love calling him Chief. <laughs> but he knows when I call him Chief, it's an honor. Yeah. It's not something to put him down, but he's a he's blessed by God to be a, an Indian, and now he truly is a Chief for Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs>